Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to this week's study. As we return to our study in the book of Zechariah, in chapter 7, shall we ask our Heavenly Father to guide us, direct us, and bless us during these hours of the Sabbath so that we may draw closer to him. May his will be done, and may we ask now for this guidance in prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, as we open the words of your prophets, we ask now, Father, for your guidance and your direction. There is much that we need to understand. There are many things that we need to know. For many times, things that are presented are not clear to us because our minds have been darkened. Enlighten us, please, Father. Guide us so that what is done may be according to your will. We thank you for these hours of the Sabbath. We ask, Father, now that you help our minds to be ready to receive that which you would want them to receive. May your spirit help our minds to be opened. We need your protection. We need your blessing. Help us now, for we have sinned. We fall short of your glory. But through Christ, we realize and we accept that we can become the people that you would have us to be if we will do so by faith. To this end, Father, we pray for this blessing we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Last week, we ended here on this particular verse. As, I, as we were pointing out, Zechariah 7, 7, we have a doubling. Should not ye hear the words which the Lord hath cried by the former prophets, when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity, and the cities thereof round about her, when men inhabited the south and the plain? Are we to look at this strictly as something that was given in the past, or are we to look at this as something that applies to us today? Well, obviously, this is our movement is based upon looking at the past. Because doesn't God reveal the end from the beginning? Mm -hmm. Now, in Manuscript 164 of 1899, it is written, To the Jewish nation was committed the oracles of God, and they were commanded to live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Never were they to depart from the instruction given them by Christ from the pillar of cloud. God declared that if this people would live by the pure unselfish principles given them and thus fulfill his purpose for them, he would honor them before all the world. So was this something that is strictly given to the Jewish nation? No. I mean, what? the Jews are given this, but it has to do with reaching the world the purpose of the jews is to show god's character to the world right so so they are given the commandments of god at so that they can be an illustration of them okay so we are shown here that this instruction had been given to the jews as they had been taken from captivity what is next said? Observe and hear all these words that I've commanded me. He said, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee forever. When thou dost that which is right in the sight of the Lord thy God. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whether thou goest to possess them and thou succeedest them and dwelleth in their land, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared into following after them. And after that, they be destroyed from before thee, that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, how did these nations serve their gods? For even their sons and their daughters, have they burned in the fire to their gods? Whether so, whatsoever things I command, observe and do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Ye shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments and do them that the land, whither I bring you to dwell therein, spew you not out. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nations, which I cast out before you. 
for they committed all these things. Therefore, I abhorred them. But I have said unto you, ye shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it, a land that floweth with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. Deuteronomy 12, 28 to 32, Leviticus 20, 22 to 24. But the people who should have been a moral light amid the darkness of the world disregarded the word of the Lord. What does this say to us today? Is this a condemnation to us at this point? Mm -hmm. Well, I refuse to accept it as a a condemnation, because condemnation in this case would be from the devil. Uh, I'm trying to align myself with the Lord as much as I can. And believe me, it is a battle, but I see a lot of victories. Okay, so I'm I'm going to ask a question. Brother Dwayne, could you repeat that question? Okay. Is this statement a condemnation of us today? Let me give you an example. Let me let me give you some examples right now. We are told by this statement, but the people who should have been a moral light amid the darkness of the world have disregarded the word of the Lord. What does it mean to be a moral light? Are we, as a church, to decide to establish gay churches? Are we, as a church... So you're you're talking about the mainstream church. Yes, the mainstream church has terribly failed and is continuing to do so. So are we. The point is we need individually to repent. And as we've been told many, many times, quit pointing fingers so much because we're liable to do the same stuff that the mainstream and everybody else is doing. Our situation right now is that we have to look directly at ourselves. We are to be a moral light. We are to be the type of people that stand reflecting the character of Christ. Did Christ trample upon the liberty of conscience? Far from it. Did he ever say to people that he encountered, oh, the government says you are to work on the Sabbath. That's okay. You are to honor the government because God has put them in place over you. Well, he did a lot of good works to be done on Sabbath, and the only government that I fully recognize is his government. Okay. Now, brother, did you have a further question regarding this question and comment that I've raised? Uh, I just wanted to restate it so I could understand it. Did this did this help you? Yes. Yes, it did. Okay. Now, instead of being a moral light in, amid the darkness of the world, they lived for themselves, and they neglected to do the very work that God had appointed them, and which would have constituted them laborers together with God. The prophet Zechariah writes, They came into the word, then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me, saying, Speak unto all the people of the land, and unto the priests, saying, When you fasted and mourned in the fifth and the seventh month, even in all these seventy years, did ye at all fast unto me, even unto me? And when you did eat, and when you did drink, did you not eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? Shall we not hear the word of the Lord, which the Lord hath cried by the mouth of his former prophets, when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity, and the cities thereof round about her, when men inhabited the south and the plain? Zechariah 7, 4-7. Are these things true, or is God tantalizing his people? Is God teasing us? Or has he spoken truth? God is true and righteous. 
we shudder at the thought of God's being like an erring man. Concerning himself, he says, for thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. For I will not contend forever. Neither will I always be always wroth. For the spirit should fail before me and the souls which I have made. For the iniquity of his covetousness was I wroth and smote him. I hid me and was wroth and he went on forwardly in the way of his heart. I've seen his ways and I will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. If we're walking contrary to that which God has presented, will we ever have rest? No, we won't. From personal experience, I can attest to that. Now here again, Mrs. White repeats Zechariah 7, 4 through 7. Now she asks this question. Shall we not take heed to these admonitions and set our souls in order? The Lord will not serve with any man's sins. Let everyone take his case in hand, setting things in order. If the Lord will not serve with any man's sins, if one of us chooses that we do not need to obey the health message, will that man or that woman walk with God? No, I don't think so. Not for long. I'm trying to share with my friends uh, getting off sugar right now. And they're starting to realize that they're slowly killing themselves and how addictive it is. And I said, well, I had to try twice before I got off of all that refined stuff. So pray for them. Because these are, I know one of them for sure really loves Jesus and really wants to improve. And they're not SD. Well, in, in these situations, I can appreciate the example that you're giving. But what do we do with someone that, let's say, purports to be in this movement, but has decided that the health message is not necessary? How can one set aside the right arm of the gospel and yet speak the word of the Lord? Does their life show the effect of God and of his word? These foods affect our minds. Okay. Our reasoning and everything. If we do not reflect the character of God in everything that we do, are we then truly reflecting him no we're not very convicting a very high standard to live by but it's well worth it now we start a new thought and the word of the lord came unto zachariah saying thus speaketh the lord of hosts saying execute true judgment and show mercy and compassions every man to his brother my brother i beseech of you to look away from yourself unto christ and live Put your trust in the one who loves human agencies. Let your dependence be holy on Christ. He is able to save to the uttermost all who come to him. Humble yourself as a little child, and Christ will receive you and bless you and strengthen you. Do not think unbelief or talk unbelief, but take God at his word and leave yourself in his hands to be taught and led of him. My brother, a great work is to be accomplished in the world. And if you will believe, you may act your part in this work. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother. It is God's purpose to manifest through his people the principles of his kingdom. 
in life and character, they may reveal those principles. His purpose is to separate his people from the customs, the habits, and the practices of the world. Because he loves them, he is seeking to bring them near unto himself, that he may make known unto them his will. Isn't that an interesting promise? Comfort your heart, my brother, by believing that the Lord wants you to be saved and that you are his child. Do not think that your mind must be in a certain state of feeling or else you are not accepted of God. Your faith must not rely upon feeling, but upon the promises of God. Amen? Amen. Walk by (laughs) faith. Yes, go ahead, sister. No, I was just giving a rousing amen because my moods shift a lot. And uh, the stability is in the word. Just believe the word. Feelings will pass. (laughs) It doesn't matter what's going on around you just concentrate on jesus he'll pull you through such like get a whole bunch of here we are told walk by faith in a thus saith the lord rest your case with the lord and believe in his word believe oh believe that the word of the lord and walk by faith and not by sight consecrate yourself anew unto god be loyal and true to a thus saith the lord and stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ doth make you free. Believe, believe, and walk by faith. Trust in the Lord, and you will see of his salvation. Whenever we operate on feelings, we can be easily led astray. When we walk by faith, when we accept a plain, thus saith the Lord, and we rely upon it, we will find that we are able to do mighty things. And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. And let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. How hard it is sometimes for us to recall that we are not in our minds to imagine ourselves taking vengeance, looking for justice against those that have wronged us. Vengeance is not ours. Vengeance alone is God's. This is no different than Christ's admonition that the man that looks upon a woman with lust in his heart has committed adultery with her. We cannot imagine evil against our brothers or our sisters in our heart because that's just the same as oppressing the widow, oppressing the fatherless or the stranger or the poor. The Israelites had seen the working of God's power and had enjoyed advantages and privileges which they knew no one but God could give them. This made their responsibility greater than that of any other people. As they received a knowledge of God's goodness, they were made accountable as chosen and precious in his sight to gladly render him the service which he sought. By living holy lives, by steadfast loyalty, by giving tithes and offerings, by cheerful, devoted service. They were to acknowledge his sovereignty and testify that in spirit, in word, and in character, they were made better by the favors bestowed upon them. These were the fruits the Lord desired his people to render to him in return for his goodness to them. God made Zion his holy habitation the joy of the whole earth. But notwithstanding his goodness to them, they forgot him and wandered into idolatry. Before their dispersion, the warning came to them. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, execute true judgment and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. And let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. These words were just as surely spoken to us as to God's people at that time. What time was this? We've talked about it before. What time was Zacharias speaking? So Zacharias speaking just before they're going to... uh finish the completion of the temple. Okay. 
So if these words are just as surely spoken to us as they were to the pe- God's people at that time, are we not also symbolically in a time just before the temple, the living temple, is to be completed? Mm-hmm. Now, this next this next paragraph is very hard to read. It's got quite a bit. We need to address this in our terms and as we would need to look at this. How did the Jews treat God's message? They refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Now, what's that saying to us? If a great wrath from the Lord of hosts has come, the point to be said here, if men refuse to receive the admonitions of the Lord, if they persist in walking contrary to his instruction, he cannot deliver them from the sure consequences of their actions. If we choose to accept that the 1843 and the 1850 charts are spoken of by prophecy, that the seven times is a testing message, that all of these things are written for our admonition, and we yet choose to hold on to one single sin because we don't want to surrender it, we are then refusing to receive the Lord's warnings. And if we continue to look to walk contrary to his instruction, we are placing ourselves where the Lord cannot deliver us from the sure consequences of our actions. What does that say to you today? What well, does to me, it say? Yeah, well, to me, it's describing, you know, the condition about uh, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, you know, the sin that cannot be forgiven. If a person can't receive instruction, they can't see even their own sin, there's not anything further that God can do. Because he keeps sending us messages, and the longer we reject those messages, um, the harder our hearts become. Right. She continues. They place themselves in such opposition to his purposes and heaven's principles that he permits their enemies to have power over them and to humble them. Therefore, it came to pass that as he cried and they would not hear, so they cried. And I would not hear, saith the Lord of hosts. But I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations whom they knew not. Thus the land was desolate after them, that no man passed through nor returned. For they laid the pleasant land desolate. This was the result of men following their own unsanctified, unsubdued way. God permitted Israel to be humbled by idolatrous nations. Mark Daniel's sorrow and humiliation as he searched out when the 70 years of Jerusalem's desolation was to be accomplished. He declares, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that the Lord would accomplish 70 years in the destruction of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplication, with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God, and made my confession, and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him, and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity, and have done wickedly and have rebelled, even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Where do we find this? Is this not Daniel 9? Mm-hmm. So, Mrs. White, 
is combining Daniel 9 here with, with Zechariah 7. She is showing us at this time our great need to humble ourselves to walk in the paths that God would set before us. It's interesting, too, that, you know, both of them are marking the the end of a period of 70 years. Right. So here we have the end of this period of 70 years. But is this also not the end of a period of 490 years for the temple? Yeah. Yeah. There's 490 years for the temple as well in Zechariah. So we have 77s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and the interesting thing, I mean, Ellen White doesn't go into detail on it, but we know that Daniel had been taken captive at that time, 68 years, because in, in Daniel chapter 9, that's going to be in um, the first year of Darius, right? So so Darius the Mede. Okay. And so Daniel... He knows that there's 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And and so he would know that he's been taken captive at that time, 68 years. Right. Right. This, so so Babylon is fall fallen and there was 70 years for Babylon. But he's he's trying to understand the prophecies of Jeremiah. He doesn't at this point doesn't fully understand them. Right. The the connection of the 70 years in Jeremiah. And there's actually two different periods mentioned in Jeremiah. One at Babylon, which is going to end um, with Cyrus's decree. And and the 70 years for Babylon, which ended with the fall of Babylon. Right. So so Daniel's trying to sort that out. It's kind of interesting because uh, here when we get to Zechariah uh, chapter seven, that we're, we're addressing. This is going to be in the fourth year of Darius. So this is also 68 years into a period of 70 years. And just, you know, kind of interesting. Two years before the period ends. I don't know what that means particularly, but it is interesting. It may be a symbol that we have yet to recognize. Mm-hmm. Six Testimonies, page 460. And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassions every man to his brother. And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. And let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. This is the word of the Lord to us also. She's saying that as it was in the past, so it is today. I cannot think that the closing part of this chapter will be your experience. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. Yet they have made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts hath sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Therefore it came to pass that as he cried, and they would not hear, so they cried, and I would not hear, saith the Lord of hosts. But I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations whom they knew not. Thus the land was desolate after them, that no man passed through nor returned, for they laid the pleasant land desolate. Brethren, in your dealings with the Lord's household, follow after the things which make for peace, and things wherewith one day may edify or build up another romans 14 19 speak no words of censure lay no blame on this one or that one there is need now of the help that all can bring seek to heal the breach that has been made do it cheerfully do it nobly come up to the help of the lord to the help of the lord against the mighty redeem at once the institution that is in so great peril. Now, Manuscript 128 of 1901. Let every man realize that he is to be worked by the Holy Spirit. Christ said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I not go away, the Comforter will not come unto you. 
but if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Is this not a three-step testing message? Mm -hmm. I yet, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, said he, the spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you, John 16, 7 to 15. We are all to be worked by the Holy Spirit. We are all to receive his admonition and his training. To all who hear my testimony in New York City, I testify that the words which are written in the testimony are of a surely, surety, surety appropriate to this people. Open the door of the heart to Jesus Christ. Let him come in and take possession of the entire being. As the Lord's commandment keeping people, do you not wish to glorify his name? Then let every worker walk humbly before him. Come down from your position of self-exaltation and seek the Lord with all your heart and soul and strength and mind. Will you allow Jesus of Nazareth to pass by without receiving the blessing he offers you? God calls upon you to search your hearts, to set in order things that ought to have been set in order before this time. Prepare the king's highway. Here again, she quotes Zechariah 7, 8 through 10. What excellent advice is this? Did the wayward people heed it? But they refused to hearken. They pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. Is this to be our case today? Too many times we have found that there are those that because we do not fully agree and we are not in lockstep with them on one small point, then no mercy and no compassion is shown. Among the shepherds of God's flock, there must be no rivalry. And as I, I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispensed through dispersed. the country. Dispersed? Okay. You're right. And they were dispersed through the countries. According to their way and according to their doings, I judged them. And when they entered under the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name, and they said to them, These are the people of the Lord, and are gone forth out of his land. Ezekiel 36, 19 and 20. They imitated the practices that were displeasing to God. Is this what we're to be doing? Absolutely not. <clears throat> but is this also what we're seeing all the way around us? Yeah, we've seen it in among us in the movement here quite a bit. I found it interesting this week. I, I was sent a video, and the party that was presenting this video was very, very direct and very, very blunt. And he asked the question about what kind of a church do we really have? And he came out and he said that when the tests begin to occur, that very likely we are going to find that we are no longer going to be able to meet in churches that are owned and named by the corporate church. And he's gotten quite a bit of pushback from other currently popular speakers about what he has said. Yet I'm talking, talking about Vine. Yes, talking I am. About, 
Have you seen the video? No, I haven't. I haven't seen that yeah. particular. Yes, I've seen it. And I, I've seen quite a few of his, and I, I, I agree with most of what he's saying. I mean, I'm praying that he comes out of the corporate church. I really believe that he will. He can't reform the corporate church, and he needs to realize that. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment and show mercy and compassion, every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow, mm -hmm. nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. The third and the fourth chapters of Malachi teach many important lessons. They are full of weighty sentences. We are to consider these chapters carefully. The Lord is weighing character. Every chapter of the work carried on in Battle Creek has been recorded in the books of heaven, from the first action to the last. Our people are not to invest large sums of money in the production of health foods. It has been plainly stated that the light regarding health foods was not given for one man's benefit alone. I have been given light in this subject. We are not to accept this offer. Our people can use the talent God has given them to prepare foods such as he would be pleased to have them prepare for the use of the common people. The Lord has given the sunshine and the rain and has caused the fruit to grow and the earth to produce that which may be prepared for the food of mankind. He requires his family diligently to till the soil, that it may produce these things that may be used as food. They are to plant the seed and care for it as it grows. This is the provision that he has made for man's food. He has given genius and tact to man, that he may prepare from the fruit of the earth a great variety of foods. Grains, vegetables, and fruits are to be planted and cultivated. The ground is to be dressed and worked, and the earth will produce her treasures. The angels were the husbandmen who, under God, educated Adam and Eve to cultivate the soil and to care for the fruit trees provided in the great variety for the use of mankind. God has given to man the great garden of the earth, and knowledge and wisdom by which to produce the best results. The blessings of the field, the blessings of the orchard, and all of the fruits of the soil are to be carefully tithed, and faithfully tithed, that there may be meat in mine house. Specified offerings and gifts were also to be made to help the poor and to sustain the work of God in its growth. <laughs> I am instructed to make inquiry of the leading men in our cause. Are you carrying forward the work committed to your hands in all lines as the Lord would have you? Are there not many branches of the work that will testify that some are not carrying forward the work as the Lord would have them? The word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother. And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. A strange spirit has been coming in among our people. But now there is to be an awakening. There is to be true, sincere missionary work done for the Jews. A little is being done, but it is as nothing compared to what might be done. There is a decided failure to take hold of this work that we ought. Let the people of the Lord meditate and pray over this matter. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, as I thought to punish you when your fathers provoked me to wrath, saith the Lord of hosts, and I repented not. So again have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and the house of Judah, fear ye not. Zechariah 8, 14 and 15. Let us remember that time is short. <clears throat> Tell the people that golden opportunities for service are being neglected. All nations are to be warned and instructed to seek the Lord without delay. For the mighty angel who deceives so many of the angelic host is working untiringly to set in operation his seductive wiles 
with which he has deceived millions and through which he desires to deceive the whole world. The work of which the prophet Zechariah writes is a type of the spiritual restoration to be wrought for Israel before the end of time. So is this is this just to be done for the Jews? Or is this to be done for spiritual Israel? Okay. Thus saith the Lord, the prophet declares, let your hands be strong that you may hear in these days, these words by the mouth of the prophets. I will not be unto the residue of this people as in the former days. For the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you. And ye shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. And I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. The promise of blessing should have met fulfillment in a large measure during the centuries following the return of the Israelites from the lands of their captivity. It was God's design that the whole earth be prepared for the first advent of Christ, even as today the way is preparing for his second coming. At the end of the years of humiliating exile, God graciously gave to his people, Israel, through Zechariah, the assurance, I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. And of his people, he said, behold, I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. These promises were given conditional on obedience. The sins that had characterized the Israelites prior to the captivity were not to be repeated. Execute true judgment, <clears throat> the Lord exhorted those who were engaged in the rebuilding. And show mercy and compassion every man to his brother and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. And let none of you imagine evil against his brother. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. Rich were the rewards, both temporal and spiritual promised those who should put into practice these principles of righteousness. The seed shall be prosperous, the Lord declared. The vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due, and I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so I will save you and you shall be a blessing. Zechariah 8, 12 and 13. The promises of God are conditional upon our obedience. In Leviticus 26, we are given a set of verses that show us the blessings that will come from obedience. On the other side, we are showed the, the curses that will happen if we choose not to obey. Which one shall we accept at this time? Of which one do we wish to partake? Now, do we have questions or comments for what we've been covering today? It, it, it'll connect with the next study. Okay. Right. What we're studying. So. All right. Any other thoughts at this time? Shall we then close with a word of prayer?
Loving Father in heaven, we thank you for your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for reminding us that these promises are conditional, just as the curses are conditional. Help us now, Father. Guide us to walk in the path that you would have us to walk. I ask, Father, for your blessing upon the study that is to follow, for your guidance and your direction so that our minds might be in light. Be with us now in all things. Help us to choose to walk in the path that you set before us. For this, Father, we thank you, and for this, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.